Welcome to the Brant Phillips Show, the show dedicated to results. Now, here's Brant. Welcome, everybody, today to the Brant Phillips Show, the show all about life and business results. So today, I I got a really, really special guest for you guys. So Mitch Steven is on the show today, and I'm going to give you a quick bio about who this guy is in case you haven't heard. He is a, uh, first and foremost, I mean, he's a real estate entrepreneur, but I would call him more of a uh, uh, godfather of the, or guru of, of owner financing. And since that's where he is today, but before he got started, a little background on, on his, you know, where he started from, he was, he's been self-employed in the real estate field since 1996 and he has purchased over well over a thousand houses I think it may be in the 1500 uh, range these days and uh, he operates out of San Antonio Texas um, he's he's just you know when you read about this guy you'll see that he's a grinder and he does what we talk about like he's gotten um, he's created success by just being persistent and never ceasing to stop learning, reading, um, going to seminars, podcasts, just whatever it needs uh, he needs to do to to get ahead. But like I said, today he's he specializes in owner financing properties, uh, basically to individuals left behind by traditional lending institutions, and uh, he's created a, a tremendous amount of success and wealth and uh, has a lot of, of uh, great testimonials from his coaching students as well who are going out and and doing what Mitch has taught them to do. So without further ado, Mitch, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Brant. Yeah, man, we were just talking before uh, before we started this thing, man, and, and I've been following you for quite a while, and uh, you know I've dabbled with um, some owner financing over the years, and just in the last year, I've I've kind of you know looked at where my business is at and just looked for ways to expand and opportunities uh, that are there. And owner financing has been just hot and heavy for me on my radar, and uh, I know that you've got your book, My Life in a Thousand Houses, and uh, which is you know uh, subtitle Failing Forward to Financial Freedom, and some other books as well. But why don't you just kind of start by telling everyone a little about bit about yourself better uh, than I did and uh, and how you kind of stumbled upon uh, owner financing and, and and what's transpired since. Well, in the very beginning, I just wanted to buy a condo to live in and bartend in my early 20s. And then it was a small, you know, one bedroom, so I, I needed a bigger one. I thought, well, if I could get a two bedroom and I could rent out one of the bedrooms to a roommate, then you know, I could probably live for pretty cheap. So mm-hmm. I rented out my one bedroom, and I got a two bedroom, and I got a roommate. And so I collected the rent on the one bedroom, and I collected the rent from my roommate. I was living for free, or maybe even making a hundred bucks. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then one day I decided, well, I'm going to get a house. And I sold the two condos, and I made more money uh, when I did that than by far. I made way more money yeah. than I made the whole year working. Yeah. And that kind of got me thinking. So then, uh, uh, I don't know, it took me a long time to grab some of the concepts to free up my mind and get out of my own way. You know, it took me way too long to figure out that I didn't need money to get into the business. Mm-hmm. As much as I needed um expertise and know how to find a good deal. So yeah, I uh, stumbled around for a while and read some books and, you know, I read Robert Allen, but it took me five years to get that concept of not needing money. I need, I, you know, to own that concept in your heart is a whole different thing. And I finally, uh, on accident, did a nothing down deal. And, and then all of a sudden light bulb went off and yeah. I thought, well, wow, if you can buy one house with nothing, you can buy the whole town with a whole bunch of nothing. I mm-hmm. had a whole bunch of nothing, so I could buy the whole town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a light bulb moment for me as well whenever uh... – when I when I realized like man like not only you know I started working with private lenders it was like not only can I buy a whole you know crap load of houses it's that the these people had more money and I was I was creating like this uh, cultivating this 
great kind of win-win s- s- scenario here where I didn't have to deal with the banks anymore, which the paperwork alone was a headache, but these people were like, you know, uh, just incredibly happy to work with me and loan me even more money. And I was like, holy cow, I think we're onto something here. Yeah, I did my first um, 100 deals with credit cards because they didn't, they didn't ask me any questions. And they didn't care uh-huh. what I bought. Uh-huh. So I did my first 100 deals with credit cards, which is a form of zero down, yeah. uh, you know. And, yeah. um, and then I did so many deals that my banker said, how are you doing all this? And I told him, and he says, well, why don't you come down and get a credit line or something? And so anyways, I started doing that, but banks turned out to be kind of too slow, too cumbersome, too much, you know, reporting all the time, you know, they yeah. just want another piece of paper. Yeah. And I just decided to go with private people, and I, I became a master at private money. I have $12 million of private money, give mm-hmm. or take a million mm-hmm. um, right now, and um, I can't... I can't spend it all. I can't buy enough houses with it. Yeah. So, um, so I invented a hard money loan company, mm-hmm. and I loan it out to my competitors who find houses, find some deals before I do. Yeah. And I loan it out to them at fifty cents on the dollar. So, yeah. It's all. I have about five or six companies. They're all kind of one big incestuous real estate mess. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it so- sounds really familiar. I didn't do a hundred my first hundred deals on a credit card, but I did my very first deal on a credit card, and because uh, I had no money, and so I was like, "Well, I got good credit and a credit card," and uh, kind of leveraged that experience to to do my next deal and started. You know, went through the hard money route for a while and a good long while actually before I kind of stumbled upon private money we'll say and uh good lord the the rest the rest is history since then but um yeah so man so so what you know your your market's a little bit different so why don't you tell people a little bit about um the types of of houses that that you you buy and that you that you pick out for owner financing i know a lot of my students and myself like we do a lot of the, you know, we buy the ugly houses and we, we fix them all up and we do the rehab thing and turn them to pretty houses, but you're, you're doing something a little bit different. So why don't you just educate people on the owner, what the owner financing model is, is for you? Well, it's a, it's a decent sized subject, but to start out, it's just, you know, I buy houses with OPM or other people's money. Mm-hmm. I buy, I buy. I have private lenders like you, and when I decide I want to buy a house, I go borrow the money at 8% interest only for five years, uh, non-recourse, collateral-only loan, and I go buy the house. Mm-hmm. And then I sell the house by taking a down payment from someone and then and then signing documents where they're going to owe me the balance over 20, 25, 30 years. And I basically finance the house to them. You know, they give me a down payment, and then they owe me 30 years worth of payments. And the core belief of my business is that a person paying a thousand dollars rent would rather pay a thousand dollars to own. Mm-hmm. And so I have to deal in the echelon of houses where I can take what 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 people are paying for rent in that neighborhood, and I can make them the owner in their payment. You know, I can replace their rent with a mortgage payment that's about the same, give or take. You know, a hundred bucks one way or the other, yeah. and um, and so that's the core belief of the business. And if you believe that most renters would rather own, then you get to join the owner finance strategy, uh, you know, arena. And if you don't believe that, then you can stay out of it. Yeah. Um, but I've been doing it for twenty-two years. There's a massive amount of renters that wish they were owners. They just don't know how, mm-hmm. and the institutions are keeping them from owning a home. Because they they don't they don't fit into the box yep. that uh, traditional mortgages offer, and so I just do that uh, about fifteen hundred times in a row now. I just I just do it over and over and over, and it's a really great business because you're helping people that are sick and tired or gotten burned in the stock market or too old to gamble in the stock market. You're helping them make a decent rate of return. You're helping the people that were renters become owners. You're helping neighborhoods that used to have crack houses in them, uh, you know, turn that page and that that house moves from being a crack house or a house of ill repute to a decent house with a 
owner occupant living in it. And, um, you know, we move, we move the tax assessments upward, which benefits the municipalities and all the services that the cities offer. And it's just, it's just a great win, 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 win all the way around. And at the end of the day, I get to make a great living and, uh, know that I caused all this stuff to happen. So typical deal would be, Care if I go through like a typical deal or run some numbers? No, absolutely. No, absolutely. And let's say like I find um, a house I can buy for fifty all in, and I go ahead and I borrow fifty two because I always always borrow an extra two thousand dollars because finding houses isn't free. And somewhere in there, I'm burning up tires, gas, Mm -hmm. advertising, paper, Mm -hmm. ink cartridges, you name it. Um, You know, it's and and I I just kind of estimate it. Runs around two thousand dollars to, you know, per house to 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 find it, and uh, sometimes that's low and sometimes that's high. But anyway, so I so I borrow fifty two. Let's say my payment's like three fifty for a round number, eight percent interest only, five years non recourse, and then I I don't do anything to the house and I owner finance it for double. It, 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 you know, so I own her finance for like a hundred thousand with ten thousand down, and I carry the ninety thousand at ten percent interest for thirty years. So it's an incredible business because what what really made the value is not that I painted it or put any new carpet. I just made it affordable for someone to own, and I made it affordable to someone who who couldn't get a loan otherwise, and and I made the payment about what they're paying for rent in that neighborhood anyways. So the separator is the $10,000 down payment. And so in this scenario, at $90,000, you know, I'm collecting about eight fifty a month, principal interest, and I'm paying out three fifty. dollars so I'm, I'm collecting you know, um, $500 spread, of which I am not a landlord. Mm-hmm. I'm not the landlord. I, I, I don't have any of those landlord responsibilities. If the air conditioner breaks, it's not my air conditioner. If the hot water heater goes out. It's not my hot water heater. I sold the house. I'm the bank. I'm just collecting the payments. Yeah. See, when you're a landlord, you collect the money. You don't know if it's your money or not. Even if you collect two or three months on time from your from your tenant. But on the fourth month, the air conditioner could break, and you could have to give all that money to the air conditioner man. So I was doing a hell of a job collecting money for the air conditioner man and the plumber and the electrician and mm-hmm. the re- shampoo carpet and the shampoo... Re- you know, the carpet guy and the shampoo guy, but, you know, I just got tired of it. I had about 25 houses I was supposed to make about, when I, you know, when I had rent houses, I was supposed to make 7500 a month. I was making zero at the end of the year. I wasn't making anything mm-hmm. off of 25 houses. And then I started owner financing these houses, and the money started hitting my bottom line and staying there. You know, my tenants would, would move into my house, tear up my house, and leave, and my, my, my buyers, they give me a down payment, move into the house, fix the house up and stay. And it's just a completely different dynamic. And I've been in love with the business for 22 years and I never stop owner financing houses. Well, thanks for sharing all that. And for, for those of you who are, who are listening to this and maybe you don't know anything about owner financing, well, one, I want you to know that what what Mitch is talking about when you dive into this and start doing a little of your own research and digging and playing with some spreadsheets with this stuff, you you realize why banks are banks. You realize why banks live to loan money, and you, and you really, for those of you who've done some real estate investing and you've done the rental property investing for a while, you you're probably catching on to the the genius with this business model. And that so when I came up, I was I was a buy and hold guy. And I bought rental property, rehabbed it, rented it out, and I got to where I was about had I had about fifty houses. And good lord, you talk about just you know the stress of the the proverbial tenants' toilets and taxes. And I wasn't really, I wasn't really like we weren't really set up to manage them very well. Meaning, me and my I had to hire an assistant, and it was just constantly there was something some kind of headache that was that we were putting out and I, I essentially started s- selling my houses because I didn't want to deal with all the crap of, of being a landlord but I want to be a real estate investor so I for the most part I just turned to 
uh, to renting house. I'm sorry, to flipping houses. But since then, yes, we've gotten much better at managing houses. But about five or six years ago, one of my one of my contractors was like, "Hey, I'm looking for a house. Like, you have a house you want to sell me?" I'm like, "As a matter of fact, I do because a tenant just moved out." And I'm like, "Owner financing." I didn't really know anything about it, but that's when I first decided, like, I'm just let me look at this. And so. I don't know, five, six years ago, I've owner financed my first one. And I'll tell you that five or six years later, after doing a seven or eight of these things, I've never had, well, I've had a couple of late payments, so I can't say that. But I've never got a got a call for repairs. I've never paid the taxes or the insurance or any of that kind of stuff. And you know, all knock on wood, all my buyers have been great, right? Like I've never had to take a house back or anything like that. So Oh, for those of you listening out there, there's there's some real genius behind this business model. Not, and it, it's more of the if you want to get into lifestyle with your business, I, I will, I'll tell you there's a reason why I'm going moving more towards the owner financing model because a lot of the things that Mitch um, Mitch talked about and uh, encourage you guys check out his his book, My Life in a Thousand Houses: The Art of Owner Financing. And uh, dig into this um, much, much deeper. And so, there's, there's a lot of uh, case studies in that book. It's in four color. It's a lot of numbers. And one of the reasons why the book is rather expensive. You know, mm-hmm. if you think fifty five dollars is expensive for a hundred page book, but there's a reason why it's fifty five dollars. And the people that call me and say, "Why in the hell is that book so expensive?" I tell them to put the book down, step away from it, and they can come back to it on another day when you're ready. Because you ain't ready right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that book's yeah. worth a million dollars. To the you know exactly. You understand yeah. what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. It's in four color, which is an expensive book to print. I mean, very expensive to print um, because there's so many numbers in the book that I thought it would be advantageous if I had the expenses in red, the income in green, and the important numbers in blue, so that you could, every time we went through a case study, you could grab all the numbers and they'd be in the right place in your head real mm-hmm. quick, uh, just to try to simplify it for you. Um, because if it's just a bunch of numbers on a spreadsheet, it can get a little bit mind-boggling, so it helps sure. break up the numbers. Sure. And uh, there's so many positives to owner financing. I mean, well, you know, sometimes you get Twenty, thirty thousand dollars down. Sometimes you get fifty thousand. Yeah. I mean, every now and then you get lucky. But when was the last time you know you tried to rent your two thousand, your fifteen hundred dollar a month house or apartment? If someone gave you a fifteen thousand dollar non refundable deposit, it never happens. Yeah. It never happens. But in this, in this business, it can, and it's a way of making money today while building a residual income for tomorrow that you could, you know, work yourself out of a job. Imagine if I did that scenario um, that I just talked about. If I did that example twice in a month, I'd make twenty thousand a day, and I'd have a thousand dollars coming in that I don't have any liabilities on. If I do it three times a month, that's thirty thousand dollars today with fifteen hundred coming in. If I do it a hundred times in a year, which I've done before, um, you know that's uh, a million dollars in down payments and. Um, a uh, hundred thousand dollar, I mean, a uh, fifty thousand dollar a year income, positive income, cash flow with with no nothing to do but collect the payment. That's all there is to do is be the bank. Make sure you get the payment. If you don't get the payment, you gotta send out a letter. Make sure you get your late fee and the payment, and that's it. And you can even turn that over to a collection agency. And um, believe it or not, you're allowed to collect principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and servicing fees. So I charge my Yep. I charge my house buyer the thirty-five dollar a month servicing fee, and they pay for it. So it's not even out of my pocket to, to hire someone else to, to do the collection. So it it's a really great business. The only two things that you don't get that you'll miss as a buy and hold guy is you'll miss appreciation and depreciation. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you have a business. You figure out other ways to get your write-offs. And as far as appreciation goes, did you hear that example that I just did, Brent? I yeah. bought it for 50 and I sold it for 100 in less than 30 days. How much appreciation do you buy and hold guys want? Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I mean, you know, uh, I, maybe maybe, maybe the landlords just think they have to wait 8 and 10 years for their appreciation. I can get my appreciation right now and I'm moving down the road. Yeah. 
No, man. Like, I, for those of you listening to this, like, I, it's 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 music to my ears, and I'll tell you, like, I've I've been before. You know, we connected for the podcast. I was reaching out to your office. I'm like, when can I get on Mitch's calendar? Like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna hear like straight from you know your mouth, like what to do, what not to do, and um, and I just, I really, I really am, man. Like, this is, it, it's 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 a it's a beautiful business model, right? And there's there's nothing wrong. Like if you want to be a landlord investor, there's, and you go out and you want to go out and buy a hundred houses and that, and that's great. And you're going to do really, really well on, on a lot of those houses. Well, if not all of them. Let me but, comment on that. Let me comment on that though. I, 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 there is a lot of millionaires made by, um, buying holes, but I, I don't think it's what you think it is because if you're trying to, if you're trying to become a millionaire, uh, and you, you're trying to make it on, the amount of money that you clear between what you're collecting and what you owe, mm-hmm. then you that's not that's a long, hard, brutal, brutal way to go. It's not going to be fun. It'll be a long time before you make any money. But I think the people that are getting rich in the buy and hold, they're paying cash for their houses. They don't have any underlying debt. They can take some expenses throughout the year and still show a profit because they don't have any debt mm-hmm. on the house. People that are buying those houses in their 401ks or their IRAs, or they just inherited some money and they paid cash for a bunch of houses. I can understand how it would work if you didn't have debt on your houses, but it does not work. It's the biggest, biggest myth ever perpetrated on the investment community that, you know, collecting 900 and paying out 500, that you're going to clear 400. That's bullshit. Mm-hmm. You're not going to clear 400. They just gave like zero weight to all the liabilities. You want to start naming them? We can, It'll be a half hour before we're done, starting with the hot water heater and the air conditioner, okay? And you just start going through a house, every component, and you're responsible for every single one of them. And then even outside the house, all the way out to the curb in the mailbox, you're responsible for all of it. All of it. Well, all the it, way out to the fence. It's one of those things, it's one of those things where a lot, for most people, they just have to experience that for themselves. Because when, when I started in real estate, so... No experience, no money, da 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 da, whatever. And so I got involved with like a local investment club, and they're preaching and teaching the business model that you just shot down, right? And that was just that's what everyone was doing. And, and so I'm like, all right, they they got a lot more money than me, considering I had zero, and they've done this like a million times. I'm going to do what they do. So I started out doing that about 10 houses my first year, 10 houses my second year, and I was working a full-time job, and then quit my job year two. But when I, I got to I got to this like almost to 50 houses, Mark, and there was a friend of mine, and we were racing to buy 100 houses first, right? Like we're like, I, got, I bought two more this month. I'm like, I bought two more. I got 20. I got 30, da, 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 and we're just like racing. Well, when I started hitting the mid-30 mark, I'm like, I'm not sure this is what it's supposed to be. And that's why when, when I mentioned, you know, when I got in that mid forties mark, I'm like, my buddy's like, I got 60. I'm like, you know what? I think you're going to beat me to a hundred because I'm, I'm not in, I'm not in, I'm not in like something's wrong here. I got to figure it out. And I flipped my second house. My first flip went horribly wrong. I flipped my second house and I made 65 grand in 60 days. And I'm like, I think I like that better. You <laughs> and so that's when I be that's why I transitioned to you know, more of a flipper. And I I hold rentals and I and I I believe in it and creating wealth. But you're absolutely right. Like a lot of the guys who are who where I was when I started out, where I I didn't have any money. Like I had zero dollars. To leverage your way into wealth with rent, uh, with rental property, like with with uh, with financing eighty percent or whatever you're getting at deals at these days, depending on, on where you're buying at, with bank financing is like it's a break even at best proposition, and you've got to really manage that thing right and have some good luck, you know, good breaks, and you can be you can come out really really well over time. But I, I agree wholeheartedly. Like it's not a great way to build wealth um, and, and to create the, a lifestyle at the same time. You can build wealth, but it's not so much of a lifestyle. And there's so much stress that's involved with all with the, with the financing and the renters and the toilets and the taxes. And that's why 
Like I love flipping houses and, and like I love the business I've created, but I'm always looking for ways to make it better. And that's, I mean, that's why we're on this call today because I believe that owner financing is one of the, the tools that people who are serious about this, about creating wealth and the lifestyle at the same time, because owner financing definitely falls into the lifestyle category, in my opinion. Um, they need to check this out. So, you know, I know you do some coaching. You and I are both real estate coaches. So, I mean, I'm assuming this is what what the focus of your coaching is with, with your students. So tell us a little bit about you know, that and what's going on there. Yeah, people try to pigeonhole me and I'm just the owner of finance. Now, that's not true because along the way to trying to find the perfect owner of finance house, you find all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes the houses, you know, are better to wholesale. You know, you know, I do wholesales. I do subject twos. I'll do um, all kinds. You know, I'll flip a contract every now and then. There's houses that are too expensive to fit into the owner financing model. There are houses in neighborhoods that I don't think are good for owner financing. They're too rough. You know, they're yep. too lower level. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll wholesale or flip those. There's other houses you buy and it just screams retail me. There's nothing to do. And there's other houses I buy and it's just like, you know, I really just want to put some money in my pocket today. Yep. But along the way, and I do it about, and people always want to know this, are you really doing this or are you just talking about it? So in 2015, I did just under 100 houses. 2016, just about the same. It's really competitive right now, so maybe I'll do 75 houses this year because I'm still only wanting to buy great deals. Mm-hmm. And um, and about 35% of them, I'll, I'll, I'll flip out of real quick um, for a lot of different reasons. Like I said, another reason could be that some of the people on my team are, are getting a little strapped for cash. I mean, it'd be a perfect owner finance house, but I can make 20000 if I wholesale it or retail it, and everybody needs to make some money so we can live to, to fight another day and another week and another month. So, you know, you sell sometimes just to keep your team going. Um, and, and so about 35% um, wholesale, 10% retail, and then the other 55% or whatever, I own or finance. So, you know, if you average about... I average over $500 a month, but I'm a pro. And I've been doing it for 22 years. But if you average $500 a month and the owner finance 100 houses, that's $50,000 a month coming in. And it don't matter whose air conditioner breaks. It's not your problem. It doesn't matter whose hot water heater goes out. It's not your problem. It's not your house. You just, you're just collecting the payments. So uh, the problem with, with notes in the owner finance strategy, if there is a problem, is that they're going to run out. They're going to expire. Sooner or later, the notes pay off. And so you have to take the wealth that you create from that. You have to buy something that's forever. And so I, I took the wealth that I made from flipping and assigning contracts and retailing and, and, and owner financing, and I took that wealth and I bought boat and mini storages. I have 1,100 doors in, a, in at the lake where I live in 14 locations, and one in Corpus and one in... Rockport, and uh, 1,100 people owe me $92 every month. Do the math real quick. Yeah. Awesome, man. So um, I created the wealth through creative real estate investing, and then I preserved the wealth through some kind of forever cash, which could be something that you rent or lease, which would be apartments or office warehouses or industrial space or strip centers or whatever. I just don't like renting houses to people and families. I like renting 10 by 10 and 10 by 15 and 10 by 20 cubicles to people. Sure. You know, sure. there's no carpet in them. There's no hot water heater in them. You know, there's very, there's no sheetrock in them. There's, you know, one light switch and one light bulb and, and a door. And that's about it. So in, in each unit. And so there's not a lot to take care of. It's awesome, man. Really, really, really great story. Um, so, I mean, what what advice do you have for people? Maybe people just starting out, people who've dabbled with rental property and found out like we did, it's not really all that. Or maybe, you know, like a lot of my students flip houses and I flip houses. Or just someone's a newbie. Like, what what advice do you have um, for well, let's investors? Take, let's, take the, let's take the wholesaler. Sure. He wholesales a deal and he makes uh, 10 grand. Mm-hmm. Well, I just made the same 10 grand he made on a house 
because I want to finance it. We both made ten grand, but here's the deal. I got 360 months of $500 a month positive cash flow coming to me. That's 180 grand. So the wholesaler just left 180 grand on the table in future money. I mean, if you're going to learn a concept, why don't you learn the one where you get the 10,000 and you get the 180,000 over the time? Why would you learn a concept where you just get paid the 10 grand? You know, although there's a place, there's a place and a time for every concept. Like I said, absolutely. You use them all, but you got to, when you get up a little bit, you say, you know what? I don't need to, I don't need to glean the field on this one. I need to, I need to go the long way where I make all the money and, you know, mm. you know, flip two and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, owner finance one or, or flip three and owner finance one or flip one and owner finance three, but get some kind of plan where you're building because otherwise you just got a job and you got to keep doing it every month and you can't even sit down. I mean, if I want to, if I want to leave the country for six months right now, I'm going to make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month, whether I doesn't make any difference. It's still going to come in, whether I'm in China or Russia or wherever I'm at, Mexico, doesn't matter wherever I'm at, the paycheck's still going to come in. If I'm a wholesaler or, or a house flipper or a rehabber, that, that doesn't work like that. Yeah. No, I know, and I've seen that with, you know, some wholesalers in my local market where they market where they just, that's what they do, and that's what they know, and they don't want to get out of that comfort zone. I'm like, dude, man, like, you're spinning your wheels, and I, and I don't know if, if your net worth is going up or not, man. Most likely it's not, um, and, and I'm not knocking wholesalers. Like, ideally, for new investors coming in, like, Start out wholesale and like learn how to market, learn how to find oh, the great deals. Glad. That's the best I place to start. People coming in, I tell them, hey, yeah. you're, you know, we look at their finances. It's been you're kind of you're too tight for my comfort level. Let's flip a couple houses real yeah. quick, put twenty grand in the bank. Then we'll have a budget for all this stuff we need to do because you'll have some place to take it from instead of your paycheck from your full time job. So let's yeah. flip a couple, get some money in the bank. Yeah. And then we're gonna take that money and we're gonna put it back into the business. You're going to set up some systems so that when you get off of work, you're not doing a bunch of menial, stupid stuff. You're out trying to sign contracts. Yeah. No, I agree. That's I just I just closed the deal Monday from one of my students who's up East Texas area, and I was like, I think you, given your where you're at, I was like, I think you need to start out just wholesaling. And he's like, well, think about that. You think it's best? I'm like, I do. You can do it anything you want, but I think you should start out wholesaling. He's like, yeah, I don't have any buyers. I'm like, who are you talking to, my friend? Uh, so I ended up buying his first deal, and he's working on some some more um, that, that, that hey, we're probably going to buy. You want, buyers, you want buyers, go to livecom.com and just watch the four-minute video on that. that uh, selling's never been so easy. Oh, yeah. But, right now it's so easy. So easy. Just go to livecom.com, L-I-V-E-C-O-M-M.com. If you don't have any buyers or don't have a cash buyers list or don't have a way to get a deal and you don't know what to do with it just go watch that and then you can quit worrying about that yeah it's it's in this well especially in the tar- texas market it's selling deals is not not a really an issue right now at least where we're at and from some other markets from friends of mine who i've talked to um man i, I know um we're, we're at a little crunch for time i would love to get into the financing aspect a little bit um I guess the last like real technical real estate question. So if you, so you borrow, typically you said 8%, uh, five years, um, non-recourse. Is that five years interest, interest only? So are you going to sell most of your notes before that period of time? Or tell me how that works. You're going to wrap the mortgage and create like a 30 year note, but tell me, tell me how, if you can, kind of give everyone like the... Well, it's a t- there's so many exit strategies that if you want to go to 1000houses.com and check out my blog, look up the article, Why I Borrow at the Terms I Do. But real quick, you could sell the notes, but selling notes is counterintuitive. I'm trying to build long-term cash flow. So selling notes is counterintuitive. If I had to, I could, though, if I got to the end. I never make it to five years. Um the average note in America lasts seven and a half years. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get refinanced or they sell it. And someone else get, brings a loan and pays off. You know, it burns down. The insurance pays off. They win the lottery. They get an inheritance. I don't know. The average mortgage in the United States of America lasts seven and a half years. So 
Um, but the train wreck is happening. It's like I'm owner financing these houses for 30 years, and I'm borrowing money at five years. So it would take a long, long time for my buyer to owe me what I owe my um, private lender, probably over probably 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, so you can replace that person with another private lender. You could write a check for it because if you did this model for five years, you'd definitely have the money to just write a check for it. You could write a check for half of it and just borrow the other half. You could take all your notes, which I'm doing this right now. I'm taking 35 of my notes down to a community bank. And I'm pledging my notes to, to refinance the $1.7 million that I borrowed to buy those 35 houses. And then I sold them, you know, and created a note to myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm pledging those notes, and I'm borrowing the 1.75. You know, I borrowed that money at 8 and 10% from private people. Mm-hmm. I'm borrowing it from the community bank for 4.75. Mm -hmm. So I'm cashing out my $1.7 million worth of private money on those houses, replacing it with cheaper money by a long shot. Mm -hmm. By a long shot, 4.75% versus, say, 9. Mm -hmm. And the new loan with the community bank amortizes 15-year mm -hmm. AM with a 12-year balloon, mm -hmm. no covenants, no adjustments, know anything it's just every five years they have a the chance to adjust the rate to prime prime plus one so there'll be two adjustments in the whole loan and there's a ceiling of nine percent mm -hmm. so that's i go to community bank and i cash them out and this is what it does i start amortizing now i'm amortizing very quickly um, I have a short note on a small amount of money, and my people that buy my houses have a long note on a large amount of money. Yeah. So I'm good for a long time. Uh, I just freed up $1.7 million of my private money, so guess what? Get to go get it out again. They're actually, yeah. they're mad at me. They want it out now. They're, yeah. they're, all, they're, they're all a little frustrated that I paid them off. They yeah. want their damn money out. Oh, yeah. The Some of them are between a bank and a private lender. The bank wants to know when you're going to pay them off. Private lenders get pissed off when you pay them off. Absolutely, they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's a good problem to have. So upset about it. They get so upset about it that I have to make sure that in the 1.7 million, I'm not paying one person completely off. I'll take if a guy has 10 houses with me, I'll take four of his houses and put them in that group. If a guy has 20 houses with me, I'll take seven of his houses and put them in that group. But okay. I never take all of someone's houses and pay them off because then they're left with no income. Yeah. And and these elderly people are living off that income, and when you when you pay them all their ass, when you pay all the loans off at one time, they have to bite into the principal that next month until those months until you get their money back out because there's no cash flow. Yeah, you. For them. Yeah, you got to manage those relationships. That's why we we help our students. We help fund their deals with our private lenders, and it's kind of it, it's a good thing. I mean, we've got more money typically than we can invest. And we like to keep our we like to keep our lenders happy, and they're happy whenever we're placing their money on good deals or trustworthy people. And uh, but you're right, man. As soon as they get it back, it's like I'm getting calls and texts, and even with some of them are a little bit more ornerier than others, where it's like <laughs> we haven't even sold it yet, and you're already like, "When am I going to reinvest it?" And I'm like, "We're working on it. Trust me, we're working on it." Well, Mitch, yeah, man, uh, I'm sorry, God. I, I think it's a great business, man, and if you if you go to 1000houses.com, there's enough free stuff over there to launch your career. Um, I don't really, I give really freely out there. I figure if people want me as a coach or think I'm the right coach, they know how to find me, and, and I can't take a ton of people because I'm not a mill house. Yeah. Uh, when, you know, I, I don't sub my students out to someone who did 20 deals last year. Yeah. I'm the guy who answers the phone. Yeah. And so, if you want to go over there and download the first 100 pages of my book, or listen to one of the webinars, or watch one of the videos, or listen into a Q&A session, there's, I mean, there's a lot of free stuff there. It really is a lot of stuff. Yeah, I check some of it out myself, man. I think we're uh, I think we're on the same page in a lot of ways. Like I like I'm not a big time coach kind of guy. I coach, but on a real small level, man. I'm the same way. Like I, I, I when my students call, like it's me they're getting. 
and yeah. uh, I like to support them. But I, the, the greatest way I coach, I'm sure the same, man, is like, we just go out and do it. Like, we just do a crap ton of real estate and and we, and we, you know, always looking for new ways to learn and grow our business, increase our wealth. That's, I'm coming down to your investor summit, uh, this weekend, man, to, uh, pick your brain and learn from other investors who are out there doing it and just to kind of continually get better. But, um, everybody go, go to a thousand houses.com. Check out Mitch Steven. It's Mitch Steven, S T E P H E N. Google him. He's all over the place. Good stuff, man. Like I really appreciate you coming on and uh, and sharing with all the listeners. It really means a lot to me. Hey, I appreciate it, Brent. It's um, one thousand one zero 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 houses dot com. Just in case anybody's wondering, and I really appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much. And you, uh, you know, I even have a podcast, reinvestorsummit.com, dot com. If you're interested i think uh brant you're going to be on the show here pretty soon aren't you yep i think in a couple of weeks i'm coming on yeah yeah I, I i think i just busted 100 interviews and uh that's a quite a job doing this stuff all, all the time it, it is be surprised how much time it takes and it is. what an effort it really takes to get it all going but yeah. you know it's worth it i'm reaching a lot of people and i'd never get tired of hearing people um tell stories about how they they let their boss go. Yeah. And I, and I, I love those stories. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's like my, my mission statement, you know, my business mission is, is kind of helping people do that to educate, motivate, inspire and equip so they can go out and create whatever it is that they want to create, man. So I appreciate you coming on the show and helping, helping me to fulfill my mission for, you know, for my listeners and followers and, and students and everybody else. All right. Well, let's stay in touch, man. Brent, I really appreciate yeah. you having me. It's been my pleasure. Likewise, my friend. I'll see you, uh, I'll see you in Mexico here in a few days. All right. All right, buddy. All right. Looking forward to it. Bye. Take care. You've been listening to The Brant Phillips Show. To listen to past shows, get updates on future shows, and find other resources or information about coaching, visit BrantPhillips.com.